Hey guys, welcome to my list of 50 mods that make Minecraft feel like a sequel or next gen game for fabric. This video is going to be more about mods which improve massively on vanilla instead of completely transforming it, but I'll have videos of that style coming out soon. I'm going to try and put the bigger and more well known mods towards the end of the video so you don't waste your time if you're a seasoned modder, but you can also take a look at the timestamps to see if you know about each mod beforehand. Because I'll be covering so many mods, all the links won't fit in the description, so I'm going to have to place them in a separate page which you can find below. I'm also going to work on putting this into a pack which you can download in the CurseForge app, and I'll have all of them running together. The bio mod that I've chosen to use for this video is Overhauled Overworld. I like this mod because it changes most of your world without adding any new biomes or blocks. It just transforms the already existing ones. The developer does say that it might be incompatible with some structure mods, but I've tested it with the ones I mentioned in this video and they're all working. There's also add-ons available for Overhaul to Overworld which can transform caves so they're similar to future updates, or one which adds some new structures, but there are plenty of other biome mods available which you might prefer. With Dual Riders, it makes some nice changes if you're playing with friends. It's a simple mod that allows two players to ride a single horse, making it easier to traverse your world together. Not Enough Animations brings some of the first-person animations into the third-person view. Some of the changes you'll notice are that in third-person mode, you'll now be looking at maps, see yourself eating food properly, and actually row boats or hold the reins of horses. Harvest Scythes adds some new scythes to all different tiers. They're great tools as they allow you to harvest fully grown crops in an area around you while replacing any seeds, or turn dirt into farmland. The mod also adds the machete, a tool which can instead be used to quickly remove leaves in a radius. Interactic changes how the dropped items mechanics work. They'll now have realistic physics and will spin a little when they're dropped and land on the ground. You can still pick items up again by walking over them, but you can also hover over something on the ground and right click it, and you'll also see a tooltip showing what item it is. Another great feature is that if you hold down the drop key, then you can throw an item instead of just dropping it. Lovely snails add snails into Minecraft, which can be tamed by the player using mushrooms. By taking care of your snail by feeding and petting it, there's a chance it will eventually grow into a big snail, which can even be ridden. The big snails can be equipped with a saddle, chest, and carpets. Cherished worlds will allow you to favorite and pin worlds which will force them to be at the top of the world selection screen. It not only makes finding your current world easier, but also prevents them from being accidentally deleted, as they need to be unfavorited first. Chipped is great for builders, adding over 2,000 unique blocks ranging from different types of bricks, glass, woods, and so much more. The developers even released an update recently adding some new designs of light. There's already lots of mods available that add tons of new blocks, but I like Chipped a lot more because it's very vanilla friendly, requiring different workstations to craft all the new blocks, and they all really fit the vanilla style. Even though Chipped adds some new types of carved pumpkins, you can use this mod to make your own custom designs pixel by pixel. By crafting a carving knife, you can use it on a pumpkin to hollow it out, and then choose your own design. When you leave the interface, your pumpkin will match your design, and you can just place the seeds back inside to light it up. Colitra is essentially a quality of life mod, and will allow you to combine your chest plate and elytra inside a crafting table. That way, you can wear an elytra without having to sacrifice the stats of a good chest item. Another mod that just makes sense is Lapis Reserve. When you place Lapis inside of an enchanting table and leave the interface, the Lapis will remain inside, which is a very small but very useful change. The Animal Feeding Trough is a block which can be crafted from five slabs. You can place food inside it like carrots, seeds, and wheat. Your farm animals will look for the trough, eat the contents, and enter love mode automatically, instead of you having to do it manually all the time. Presence Footsteps is a sound modification which aims to make your world more immersive. All the different blocks you walk on will now have their own matching footstep sounds, which is a big improvement. 
Clear despawn will give you a good idea of how long your items have left before they start to despawn. When an item has around 20 seconds left, it will start to flash, with the speed increasing depending on the time left, and it's a client-side mod. Realistic fire spread will cause entities that are on fire to set fire to the blocks around them. This one could be a bit dangerous, but I think it makes more sense. With herds panic, if an animal is scared, other animals from the same pack will also be scared and react the same way. So if you hit a cow, other nearby cows will know what's happening and flee, which gives them a bit more intelligence. If you want to test out the damage your weapons deal, then try out straw dummies. They can be placed down and equipped with their own sets of armor. When you attack them, you'll be able to see the amount of damage you deal. Particle Rain replaces Minecraft's rain with particle-based ones instead, which is a lot more visible and looks thicker, with changes also being made to snow. If you head to a desert, then you might notice a new sandstorm effect, which comes with this mod. Illumination should make your world prettier, especially during the night. It's a client-side mod which adds new particles like fireflies, which really help with ambiance. In the end, you might find chorus petals which appear near chorus flowers, or if you head into caves, you might find glowworms sticking to the ceiling of caves. If you have the mod installed in October, you can find some Halloween-themed changes, like orange fireflies and scary eyes in the dark. This rocks adds all sorts of small items around your world that you can interact with and pick up. You can find rocks, sticks, pine cones, seashells, and starfish, which can all be collected to obtain items like saplings, nautilus shells, and sticks. It just improves world generation a little bit, and you can also find geysers, which boost you up. Immersive portals is great for when you're jumping between dimensions. With it, you can see straight through a portal into the other dimensions, with a live view of what's happening inside. But the best part is, is that you can jump straight in without having to deal with loading screens. Gilded Armor allows you to apply a gold trim to your netherite armor, which doesn't change any of the stats. Instead, you won't aggravate any piglins by wearing the armor, and you'll retain all your enchantments too. Grimm's Transportables brings some great concepts to life. It adds carriages and carts into the game, which can be equipped to your horse and pulled around. They can either be equipped with up to four players, or two players and a double chest of storage. There's also some new rails which allow you to launch yourself up, increase your speed, or teleport you. And with the new tiers of ladders, they massively change your climbing speed. The Doggo mod improves your tamed wolves so they have more personality and behavioral traits. Now dogs will occasionally dig in their free time and possibly find treasure, or instead they might choose to take naps or scratch their ear. To manage a dog's health, you can give them a food bowl, which they can eat from when they're lacking some health, or give them food to hold in their mouth which they'll eat when they need to. With the new tennis balls, you can play fetch too, as long as you don't throw the ball too far. When it rains, you'll now start to notice puddles forming with this mod, which you can even interact with to collect water. I think it's great for immersion, and it gives a similar effect during snowfall, with snow layers accumulating. Ruined equipment will cause your tools and armor to stay in your inventory if they break, instead of vanishing. That way you can go ahead and either repair it, keep it for memorial reasons, or even empower it. When an item becomes ruined, it will keep its enchantments and other attributes so it's never truly gone. Another mod for immersion is Automatic Path. We tend to always run to the same locations in Minecraft, and with this mod installed, you'll notice over time that grass blocks will slowly turn into paths. Boats and Beeps allows you to apply upgrades to boats, giving them some different mechanics. Upgrading them with furnaces will increase their speed, or you can use chests, which give them storage, both blue ice and sea lanterns can be used to change the speed of boats on land and water, and an end rod will even allow it to fly. You can even decorate your boats with banners and heads. I covered the graveyard recently, a mod which adds some new locations to come across in your world. These could be some different sized graveyards or the memorial tree. If you do come across a graveyard, you can do some grave robbing to find loot, 
or make your way into the structures to find some hostile enemies who might be guarding treasure. There's a few new blocks with the mod which can be used for decoration, but there's also gravestones which you can ride on. Fruitful changes how you collect apples. During a full moon, bees will be able to pollinate blossoming oak leaves. The next day they'll grow apples which can be picked, but they'll also fall off after a few days. You can eat them like regular apples, but they can be baked instead too, which replenishes more hunger. Grizzly bears are large creatures which often come across in forests, usually with some bear cubs. It's always nice to add more life to the game, but you should be weary around grizzly bears. They can deal large amounts of damage, and if they feel threatened, they'll attack you on sight. Couplings will cause blocks that usually connect together to work simultaneously, like doors which are on opposing hinges, which should now both open together. The same also goes for vertically stacked gates and trapdoors which are next to and oppose each other. It makes sense to install most of Young's mods, which changes some of Minecraft's popular locations, while keeping the game mechanics the same. Firstly, there's better mine shafts, which adds new styles to mine shafts consisting of nine different biomes. The design of mine shafts are slightly changed, so that they're a lot less boring, and you can also find areas nearby like abandoned workstations, cellars, and mining outposts. Young's Better Caves also makes major improvements, but with the structure and layouts of caves massively improved. You'll find that caves are much more random and less tunnel-like. They should be a lot more interesting to explore, and you can come across locations like lava caverns, underground lakes, and more. With Young's Better Strongholds, you'll notice that strongholds have been transformed, so they're much more interesting to explore. Like Young's other mods, it doesn't change any mechanics, only the appearance of the location. With it installed, strongholds should consist of over 15 different rooms, with the portal room also being overhauled. I love all three of these mods, and I think they make great implementations into the vanilla game. Better foliage will improve on vegetation in your world starting with leaves which are more bushier than normal, losing their blocky shape. Small amounts of grass will be visible on grass blocks, which should also make your world look more natural and alive. Changes are made to logs so that the corners are chamfered, causing them to have a more rounded appearance. Some other changes include leaf particles falling from leaf blocks and reeds growing from shallow water. Repurposed structures takes a lot of Minecraft's vanilla structures and enhances them so that they have a different appearance depending on the biome they spawn in. As an example, when it comes to pillager outposts, there are 13 different variants, like ones which are winter, desert, and jungle themed. As well as changing the vanilla structures, the mod also introduces some new ones like jungle fortresses and nether cities. It's a good idea to further improve the Nether with the Better Nether mod, which makes the Nether a lot more diverse. You'll find new content everywhere like plants, mobs, biomes, structures, and materials. It's a really detailed mod and really complements the Nether update that we've already had. I'll just show you a bit more footage of what you can expect to find with this mod installed. From the same developer is Better End, which focuses on the end dimension instead. Just like with Better Nether, you'll come across new biomes like the Crystal Mountains, Dragon Graveyards, and Ice Starfields. Again, the diversity this mod adds to the end is amazing, as it's a lot harder to get bored exploring as you're no longer surrounded by just endstone. You can also discover all sorts of new blocks, mobs, equipment, and mechanics. Charm is a Vanilla Plus style mod, meaning it just improves on vanilla aspects of Minecraft. There's so many changes included with the mod that make the game better, like bookcases which can hold books, more texture variations for some blocks, some new types of villagers like the beekeeper and lumberjack, and the ability to hurt your pets being removed. There's dozens more features though that you can read about on their website. Skin lanterns will add some new light sources which have a nice design to them. There are lanterns, and there's quite a few designs available for them, like Christmas-themed ones, some which look like mob heads, and others which are just plain colors. Carrier is incredibly useful, as it allows you to pick up single-block entities like chests and furnaces and move them around. You're not limited to that, though, as you can also carry your pets. 
which could be useful for putting them in enclosures. When you transport stuff, you'll be hit with the slowness effect, and your contents will remain safely inside. The Antique Atlas provides a new form of maps in the game, which are inside of a book. Unlike vanilla maps, you can scroll through the area, zoom in and out, and even set your own custom waypoints. If you have a big world, then multiple atlases can be combined together to make one huge map. And I really like the hand-drawn style, too. Adorn is an extremely popular furniture mod for fabric, adding some useful decoration items. You can craft chairs, tables, sofas, cupboards, chimneys, and more. A lot of items have interactions, too, as you can store items in drawers or display them on shelves. The Untitled Duck mod will add small ducks and geese into Minecraft. Ducks are quite similar to chickens, as they can be bred with seeds and occasionally lay eggs, although they tend to swim a lot instead. Whereas if you come across a goose, then you can tame it, similar to a wolf so that it fights alongside you or sits when you tell it to. One interesting mechanic for geese is that the illagers are scared of them. Enchantment descriptions makes it easier to understand enchantments, as you can now hover over them to see exactly what the enchantment does, and it supports lots of modded enchantments. Incantationum adds quite a few new enchantments and curses, like the Curse of the Thunders, which has a chance to cause a lightning bolt to hit the player's location each time they take damage whereas some enchantments are Forging Touch, which can smelt blocks that you break, or Magnetic, which can suck items into your inventory. If you have Bane of the Swines, then you'll deal more damage to mobs like pigs, piglins, and hoglins. Croptopia is a huge expansion of the food system, adding all sorts of new crops which you can obtain from trees or the ground. There's over 200 new foods, which are lots of different fruits, vegetables, salads, sandwiches, and more. You can obtain some crops from trees and biomes like the plains and jungles, and seeds can be found by breaking grass. More villagers add some new villager professions, which you can find spawning naturally, or you can create their workstations yourself. The new villagers are the oceanographer, netherologist, forester, enderologist, engineer, hunter, florist, and miner. As you can expect, you're going to get access to lots of new trades from these villagers, where you can obtain end, redstone, nether items, and more. With this mod, you can store experience inside of an XP book, which can be crafted from a book, a diamond, and three lapis. It's useful for if you think there's a chance that you might die shortly, as you can quickly deposit and withdraw experience, or you can brew the book alongside some mundane potions to get some special bottles of enchanting which can give you more experience in return. That's the end of this very long list. At the time of this video, we weren't on the best version for modding, so there might be a few good options missing. If you like this video, then check out my channel too, as I've covered a lot more like this, and subscribe for my future ones.